concept of a buffer seem to have given some people some trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the uh, coordinates for titration. All right. We'll have base or hydroxide ion on the x-axis. And of course on the y-axis we have pH. So there was uh, a couple of things, a few things, people were confused about. pK, okay, and how it relates to, uh, to pH. Also pI, what that means. And in the uh, previous uh, lecture, I talked about ionization of amino acids. And so, how the, the amine should be a 3 plus, and the carboxyl groups, how they ionize. Go ahead and pronate carboxyl group here. So how they ionize under different pH conditions. So we'll begin by um, demonstrating on this titration curve how the hydrogen ion concentration, which is essentially what pH is, how it changes as we increase the hydroxide ion concentration in the presence of a compound like an amino acid that will essentially act as an acid or base. So if you put an acid or a base in solution, so let's say we have the amino acid, I like to draw it beginning with the alpha carbon, uh, the R group and the alpha carboxyl and alpha amine. So this is what alanine, simple amino acid. And it has two groups that can lose proton, only two, the amine and the carboxylic acid group here carboxylic acid and the amine group. Each of these is susceptible to uh, loss of this proton, okay, and loss of these protons, but not the uh, alpha hydrogen, if you will, and certainly none of the hydrogens around the methyl group are lost, uh, can be uh, oxidized, removed in an aqueous solution because they're not acidic hydrogens like the uh, carboxylic acid and the amine group. So if we titrate these and we begin at a very low pH, pH of let's say 1 and 0 down here. And remember we're in solution so this titration curve is describing what's going on inside a beaker or a test tube of an aqueous solution that contains the alanine. As we add the base, of course, you know pH is going to go up. Well, in the presence of this amino acid, pH is going to stop going up, essentially. When it reaches a pH of 2.2, now it stopped going up because we're at a point now where I'll represent this carboxyl group down here. The carboxylic acid now can lose a proton and form the carboxylate the negative charge and this is an equilibrium they're 
equal concentrations at this point here, at the pK. And so this is your acid. We represent that as usually as HA for any molecule. Is in equilibrium with the conjugate base, which is essentially the base of the acid. That's why it's referred to as conjugate. Now if we continue to add base to this solution here, and this is kind of like a titration. You all have had the titration uh, experiment already, I believe, in lab, dripping in uh, acid or base. solution of an amino acid. As we continue to do that, the pH will begin to go up again. And it's because we have gone beyond the equilibrium of the acid and conjugate base. Now we're all, it's all in the form of this conjugate base, and it's no longer capable of, of uh, accepting a proton. So as we continue to add now we need to uh, remember pH is going to continue to go up until there's something that will begin to absorb the uh, hydrogen or something that will contribute hydrogen to the solution to try to make it more acidic. And so in this case we've gone past the acidic uh, functional group carboxylic acid, we're moving into the amine group. And once we get to a point where the weak acid is in equilibrium with the conjugate base, again, oh, sorry, this is a negative, it's this point that we reach 9.4, which is the pK of the amine terms, of the N terms. And so NH3 plus is in equilibrium now with NH2. And since we lost the proton, we no longer have a charge. Charge is zero, essentially. And if we continue to add base, we will go beyond that equilibrium until we reach the maximum concentration of uh, hydroxide ion in an aqueous solution, which is 10 to the minus 14. Okay? So when we're at equilibrium between the weak acid and its conjugate base, we're at the pK. So this is the pK for the amine. And this, 2.2, is the pK for the carboxyl, carboxylic acid or carboxylate. Okay? Now, this point here in the center is significant because it's this point that we are actually in equilibrium between the conjugate base oops, of the amine and we are in equilibrium uh, with the weak acid or the str actually fairly strong acid but uh, of, the, of the carboxyl group is at this point, because remember, this is all in solution. So we're talking about titrating through a point here. And at this point, we will have equal amounts of this and equal amounts of this. We also have equal amounts of the NH plus, which is also considered
considered a weak acid. And we are also in equilibrium with this OO uh, minus, which is also considered the conjugate base. So when these are all equal at this point here, we have a neutralization. We have positive on the left side and negative on the right side. These two are neutral. This gives an overall net charge equal to zero. And if the net charge is zero, water will not solvate the molecule. It won't surround the molecule. Remember we talked about solvation. Like we have a charged uh, ion like chloride and hydrogens from the water will surround it and actually keep it in solution because the hydrogens are partially positively charged and the hydrogens on a water molecule are partially uh, positive partially negative on the oxygen partially positive so this positive charge will interact with the negative charge. So this is referred to as solvation or hydration in the, in the case of water. So when the molecules are have a net charge of zero, you can't do this. So if you can't do this, then the molecules will not be soluble in water. And so the PI, which is at this point here, is referred to as the iso electric point, iso meaning same, and the protein, the amino acid, uh, polypeptide, will precipitate, will come out of solution. And uh, so we have to, we use this actually to isolate proteins. We use a PI value and uh, we can get that PI by doing a titration much like this. Solubility above and below the PI uh, will be the greatest and the PI will be the least if, if it's at all soluble. And so I understand that the solubility, uh, the PI is reflecting the charge and it's the pH it's actually a pH value. PI is actually a pH value that will give you that net charge of zero. Just like pK is a pH value that will indicate the equilibrium between the weak acid and the conjugate base. Okay, so can't talk about uh, pHs and pKs going up or down. We talk about the ions, concentrations of the ions increasing or decreasing. Alright, so hopefully that will uh, clear up that particular topic, which will entitle the titration.